Okay, everyone, this is chapter 7.2 solutions for those of you who have the workbook and have been trying out the problems and just want to see if your answers are correct or maybe hear an audio explanation um, as well as see how I might have answered the questions. Okay, so explain how sucrose is loaded into the phloem, highlighting the role of the companion cells in the process. Um, so in this case, um, there's, a, there's an opportunity for you to start by saying that sucrose is loaded through active transport, um, which would be correct. Um, please, by all means, mention that if you're given this question. Um, then also mention that sucrose moves from the source um, into the phloem tissue, either through the apoplastic or symplastic pathways, because that's going to give you an additional mark. Typically, in the exam, this question is about five marks. So if you are able to give five points, you will be fine. So I've just given you two, the first two. Second thing that you then say is that the companion cells play a key role because they have hydrogen pumps. The companion cells are fully alive, by the way. They have cell organelles and all the pizzazz that comes with being a cell. Whereas with the sieve tubes, which make up the phloem, they are not exactly alive, but they do have some organelles that also help them with their function. So in this case, the companion cells are the ones that allow for the loading of sucrose. The companion cells will pump out hydrogen ions um, into their cell wall using, an AT, um, using ATP. This is why it is called active transport. Um, in order to re-enter the cell from the cell wall, and remember the reason why this is, actually, let me just do a drawing so that I'm sure that you get what I'm saying. So let's say this is what the companion cell looks like. Hmm. I'm seeing I don't have enough room here to actually draw it the way that I would like to show it to you. So I'm just going to make it as small as possible. Let's say this is the phloem sieve tube. The companion cells are usually by the side, just like that. And because they are like normal plant cells, they have a cell membrane and a cell wall. So when we say that there's a hydrogen pump, so this is just like a cytoplasm, there are hydrogen pumps on the surface of the cell wall, um, of the cell membrane rather, that allow for hydrogen to be pumped out of the cell into the cell wall. This is what we made. So it's basically pumped into the space between the cell wall and the cell membrane, okay? Now, those hydrogen cells don't want to be lounging there and just sitting there the whole time. They want to go back inside. But in order for them to go back inside, there is sucrose. Remember, this is the remaining environment of the, of the cell or of the plant, right? And there's a lot of sucrose in here. The sucrose... Um, is able to move through the cell wall, but you can't move through the cell membrane because remember the sucrose is moving in water, right? The cell wall is okay with water permeating through it, but it doesn't allow for other things. So the hydrogen ions are pumped into the surface. Sucrose also is sitting here in this space, but it can't cross through the cell membrane. The core transporter molecule, there's something called a core transporter that brings the hydrogen ions back in. So in order to bring the hydrogen ions back in, because it is called a core transporter, it transports both hydrogen ions as well as sucrose. So it means when the hydrogen ion binds to that core transporter, it will not take that hydrogen ion inside the cell until sucrose is bound to it. So by the binding of those two, it is then able to take sucrose into the cell. Um, and from that way, the sucrose can then move into the um, sieve tube or the sieve element, which is, the, which is what makes up the phloem and start to flow across. If this was confusing, please watch the video that I did on sucrose. Um, it's again, transporting plants, chapter seven. Remember all the videos are arranged by chapters. So if you just go to the channel, go to playlists, and then go to chapter seven, you'll find all the chapter seven videos there and you can watch and rewatch as much as you need to. Two examples of a sink and a source. Um, so a sink is, always remember that a sink is where the sucrose is stored after it has been made and the source is where it is made, in quote. Um, so a seed is definitely a sink because once the sucrose gets there, it's simply stored. You can also have the roots. The leaves um, are where sucrose is made because of photosynthesis. The leaves can also be a sink in some cases, depending on what you're dealing with. Um, and then phloem itself is identified um, as phloem itself is identified as a source. And the reason for that is that phloem 
well, it doesn't necessarily make the sucrose, but it accepts the sucrose and carries it. I'll be a little bit more iffy about that, putting that in the answer. Um, but I've just put it here because I've seen like lots of updated notes that show that phloem can be a source. And I don't want to exclude you from any additional information that might be out there. But please make sure you check that really well before you put it down in your exam. All right. Then the same question we had for the xylem, how is a sieve element related to its function? How is a sieve element structure rather related to its function? So sieve elements are made of living cells or basically semi-living cells. They have companion cells that are living and enable the transport um, of sucrose effectively. They have sieve plates as well um, in between the different sucrose um, in the in between the different sieve tubes, and what the sieve plates do is that if the phloem is injured in any way, like if it is damaged in any way, the sieve plates can allow the phloem to seal itself. So they are like these plates that are in between. So phloem is not a hollow tube, all right? If you've watched the videos on chapter seven, you know this. Phloem is not a hollow tube. In phloem, you have what you call like those sieve plates that are at the ends at different points at certain intervals within it and so if there is a damage somewhere um, in the fluid these sieve plates can actually use the sap to seal things and just seal themselves over there right so that the damage doesn't spread or anything like that they also have pores that allow connection with adjacent tubes in case in case there's a situation in one specific fluid sieve tube what are the key differences between xylem and phloem? Xylem is made of dead cells. It has lignified cell walls. It doesn't have any end walls um, and it doesn't have sieve plates, whereas phloem has all of these things. Um, and it, um, phloem doesn't have lignified cell walls. Meanwhile, xylem has it. So yeah, that's the end of the section of the workbook and chapter eight is coming shortly.